G'day guys, Ziggy D here and welcome to Avorian. I've been playing way too much of this game, and as such I've been inspired to make some guides for it so that you guys can get into it and get more out of it. So this is going to be a bit of a survival guide series, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be, but we'll explore some of the features and mechanics starting with getting started and building your first ship. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. We're going to start a single player game and create a new galaxy, you can name your galaxy whatever you want, I'm going to name it just that. You can also do whatever seed you want or just leave it with the randomly generated one. The seed will determine the procedural generation of the galaxy that you start in. I'm gonna do whatever seed. Then you can select the difficulty. The difficulty determines how much damage you'll be taking from enemies. If you're the type of person who will want to spend a bunch of time mining resources and trading and getting lots of stuff to build big massive ships, then you'll want to put the difficulty a little bit higher so that the challenge scales a bit with your ship building prowess. If you want to have a bit of a more chillaxed time of it and want to just jump in, build whatever ships you want and have a go through, then you want to play on an easier difficulty. I'm going to play on Veteran here since I've been playing this game for a little bit and I know a little bit about it. Collision damage in this game is brutal. Even at 0.5, I crashed 4 out of 6 of my ships, having them explode into tiny bits. So uh, I recommend setting collision damage a little bit lower than full. However, I do like having collision damage on. Crashing your ships is fun part of the learning experience and it gives you an opportunity to build new ships. Uh, if you haven't died from pirates or something in a while, then crashing into an asteroid is a good kind of little wake-up call. So I like playing on 0 0.5, but you could go do 0 0.25 and you'll have to, uh, and then you'll be able to bump into some things a little bit and be okay. At full damage though, if you slightly graze something, you will explode. So we're going to go 0 0.5. Creative mode is basically free building mode. We're going to play on the regular game and let's do it. So when you begin, you will spawn in some random sector in some random corner of the galaxy and your galaxy will be randomly determined or procedurally generated based on the seed you chose. You will begin in this little drone here. You can look around with the mouse and that'll turn your ship for you, or you can hold control and look around without turning your ship if you like. You uh, will notice the mining lasers that I have will follow my mouse cursor and will aim either with the free look or with the regular ship looking as well. WASD moves your drone around. W will use your engines to propel you forwards. A, S, and D will use your thrusters instead to allow you to strafe or move backwards. Q and E will allow you to descend and ascend, and Z and X will allow you to roll. The way the movement works in this game is if you accelerate in one direction, we can also use spacebar to thruster forwards or afterburner forwards at a faster rate. When you release, your ship will attempt to bring you to a stop using thrusters and inertia dampeners depending on whether your ship actually has those things or not. If you propel yourself in one direction and then turn, you'll notice your ship drifts in that direction for a while before meeting up at its new heading and it's your thrusters that will attempt to correct that. What this also means is if you're heading towards an asteroid, if you spin around and face the other direction and thrust in that direction, you'll be able to bring yourself to a stop. Let me attempt to demonstrate that here by not crashing into this asteroid. Let's see how we go. So we're coming into this asteroid way too hot, so I'm going to spin around and bring myself to a stop before I hit it. And there we go. <laughs> However, what I recommend when heading towards things in space, it's a very good idea to aim below or above or off to the sides rather than directly at them, so that if you're coming in a little too fast, you will instead fly underneath them instead of into them, which is a pretty good idea. At this point, I want to mention a particularly important option, retrograde and prograde markers. You want to enable these. If you're going one direction and you change direction, you'll notice that blue marker there. That indicates where we're drifting towards currently. So you can see that I'm currently heading towards that asteroid. And as such, you may want to change your heading a little bit to try and avoid it. Similarly, if you spin around, a purple marker will indicate where you need to aim while while thrusting forwards in order to come to a stop. So if we're heading in this direction and we spin around, we want to aim towards that purple one to come to a stop at the exact spot that we are. If you press P, you can bring up your ship menu and in here you can see a little drone, you can see some stats and you see that it has two mining lasers that are very dodgy. And that kind of hints at the only real use of this drone, which is to mine you some resources to get and build your first ship. 
Whenever you die, you will respawn in your drone in your home sector, which by default is your starting location, though you can set other home sectors later on. So now in order to build our first ship, we're going to have to mine a little bit of iron ore. As our drone comes equipped with some mining lasers, what we want to do is locate some iron ore asteroids and then go mine them. So they're pretty easy to spot. The glowing asteroids, these little brown glowing bits in them, will have ore. You can press the middle mouse button to select them and that'll lock on and provide some extra information on the asteroid, including how far away it is. And also down in the bottom right, you can see that it has 7,200 iron in it. That's the amount of iron you could potentially get from this asteroid, though depending on your mining laser's efficiency, you're, you're most likely going to get a lot less than that. Some other tips for locating your asteroids to mine. If you mouse over them, you'll notice they'll highlight with a different color, so regular asteroids are gray, whereas iron asteroids are going to be brown. Another tip is you can press the F9 key to enter this RTS mode here, which will allow you to have a bit more of a look at the sector. You can use the arrow keys to move around or use the edges of the screen, and you can zoom in and zoom out to actually spot some asteroids yourself. You can also mouse over and it'll highlight any asteroids for you. So you can see that highlights brown there. And then we could select that, exit this screen by pressing escape, and then you'll see an arrow pointing towards the asteroid that you currently have locked onto. And then you can just head towards that. So let's go mine a few iron ore asteroids. We're looking for about 2000 iron to get started. And you'll notice I'm accelerating to the bottom of the asteroid instead of directly into it. Just hold down left click to activate your mining lasers. And you're just gonna, going to want to mine the iron ore asteroid kind of from the outsides inwards. As each section of the asteroid becomes destroyed, you'll notice you'll automatically pick up the iron. You don't need to you know, fly around and try and get it. In this game, as long as your ship is near pick upable objects, your ship will automatically pick them up if it can do so. So we chewed up that first iron ore asteroid and got 300. We're gonna try and aim for about 2000, depending on the size of the asteroids. That could be anywhere from two to like, six or eight asteroids. These are some smaller ones, so we're not gonna get too much from these. So we'll have to go chew up a couple of them. This one's a nice juicy asteroid. It's got about 7,000 iron in it. So even at the 14 or 15% efficiency that our mining lasers are at, we're uh, still gonna be able to get the probably the rest of the 2,000 that we need from this one asteroid here. Okay, I have about 1,900 iron now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly near to whatever station is near to us. So we can see with the middle mouse, we can select this one and that's a resource depot. And we wanna just move to about two kilometers away from that and just make sure we're not too close to any asteroids. The reason for this is we're going to need to hire a crew for our ship as we build it. So we wanna be nice and close to that because our ship won't be operating at full efficiency until we get some crew. All right, this looks like a good spot. Now, before we can build our first ship, we're gonna to have to first found it, which is gonna cost 500 iron right off the bat. We can hold shift to free up our mouse cursor and then go select found ship over here. As you can see, it'll cost 500 iron and we can enter the name of our ship here, which is gonna be the Vegemite. Alliance ship is if you want to add it to an alliance in a multiplayer server, but for now, we're just gonna go okay. And then zooming out, we can see all of the might and majesty of the Vegemite. As you can see, our ship is just a block at the moment and it can't do anything, it can't fly because it's just a block of hull, that's it. <laughs> so we're gonna need to start adding to that and building this into an actual ship. So we're gonna press B. Now the ship building in this game is, is pretty insane. You can build some crazy ships with this. I've seen massive Warhammer 40K space hulks and I've seen things from Star Trek and Star Wars and there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can build in this ship. But don't worry, your first ship is going to be crap. <laughs> You're gonna build a little rust bucket junker, just do a little bit of mining, maybe fight a few easy pirates, maybe do a little tiny bit of trading to get yourself the resources to build bigger, better and badder ships. Now the way I'm gonna build this first ship is going to be quite simple and modular so that I can demonstrate some of the mechanics of shipbuilding and some of the blocks that we're gonna to add to ships. However, you can build ships however you want. Build your first ship however you want to, but hopefully through this, you'll be able to learn some of the principles that you can apply to your ship construction in order to make them effective. Okay, so the first thing we need is crew quarters. We're gonna need a crew to man this ship, and we're gonna aim for about 30 crew quarters to make our ship nice and expandable right from the get-go. We're not gonna need that many to begin with, but we are gonna want enough to expand upon a little bit as we upgrade the ship. 
So you'll see this big green arrow is pointing towards the front there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some iron crew quarters and you can see this selection bar box down here. You can also hold space to bring up a big menu temporarily or you can press the plus down here to bring it up more permanently to get access to more blocks. As you scroll down, you'll see different materials of blocks and you can see there's a range of blocks here, even in iron. Now, once we've selected crew quarters, we can go ahead and place this. By default, it'll just be this square. However, you can use W, A, S, and D to change the dimensions of the block. W will scale it up, scale it up as a whole. A, S, and D will scale the different sides of it. For now, as I said, I'm gonna make this very simple and modular. So I'm gonna use this size block multiple times for the internals of our ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some crew quarters here. And I'll add some crew quarters here. Now we have this other hole block that we started off with, but we can actually go ahead and upgrade that into something else. So we've got currently crew quarters selected. We can select this button over here for transport and blocks, and it'll actually transform it there. So as we go to add blocks, as we go to place them and upgrade them and change them, you'll see on the right hand side, the different impacts that these things are gonna have. So if I place this, you can see we're up to 37 crew quarters. If I take it away, we're down to 39. Now the uh, impact that most blocks have in this game is based upon their volume. There are some blocks that will act differently and we'll go into that as we go. However, just for crew quarters, for example, it's just based on the actual volume. So a block of this size will give eight crew, whereas a block of this size will give 131 crew. Crew quarters do need to be a certain minimum size. A crew quarter like this won't fit anyone. So they do need to be at least about yay big in order to get any additional crew to your ship. All right, so now that we have about 30 crew quarters, we're gonna start adding some other important pieces to our ship. For example, engines. We're gonna need some engines to go. So I'm gonna add an engine here. Now I'm gonna make this engine a little bit bigger because the larger the volume of the engine, the more actual thrust it will give us. So let's go ahead and make a, an engine like this. Looks like we're making a bit of a rocket at the moment. Now we're gonna to need to be able to move our ship in other dimensions in space instead of just forwards, because at the moment we can only go forwards, <laughs> which is not ideal. So we're gonna add thrusters to achieve that. And we're gonna to need to do this quickly as well because our ship is going forwards and it currently has almost no way to stop apart from under its own steam. So we're gonna add this before we crash into an asteroid or something. So we could go ahead and just whack an iron thruster on the front here. And that's gonna get our ship functioning at the very bare minimum right now in order for us to go hire a crew. So that's what we're gonna do. And then in a second, I'll get into how thrusters function because thrusters are a little bit more complex. But for now, you see that our ship can actually move left and right and can actually strafe and do various things. Enough to get us to be able to dock with this station that we parked near. You'll notice we're moving very slowly at the moment. It's because we have no crew. We're trying to run the engine, the thrusters, and everything of the ship by ourselves. So we're just gonna slowly creep on in towards this dock here. Once you select a station with the middle mouse, you'll be able to see where the docks are located and you have to move fairly close to them and you can press F to dock. Now we can hire a crew. Wherever possible, you want to hire professionals. So we're gonna need mechanics and engineers primarily right now. We can get professional mechanics here. So we're gonna hire one of those. And then we're gonna just have to hire some regular crew to fill out the rest of the slots. The reason you want professionals is they provide more workforce per man. So a professional will provide, if we press P and go to crew here, 1.5 workforce per single professional mechanic. And they actually level up and become even stronger as well. You'll notice we're at 130% efficiency here because we only need one workforce and we've got 1.5. Mechanics and engineers can both add extra efficiency to your ship depending on how many you have. So we need one engineer to operate our engines and thrusters and things like that for now. We can go ahead and assign two, which will give us a bit more efficiency. And now we'll be able to move at full speed based on our current ship's design. I'm just gonna be careful not to crash into our asteroids. We'll come to a stop here. And then we'll continue building our ship. So now that we've done that, we can get a bit more of an accurate assessment of things like our thrust and our brake and our yaw and our pitch and so on. The stats over here on the right. We may need to add more crew as we go, as we scale up the ship. For now, I'm actually gonna delete this thruster because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some frameworks and I'm gonna try and move the thrusters towards the outside of the ship. I'm gonna use the match block tool here, which will match this block to the center and same size as it. And then we can actually use X mirroring and the X axis by default is on your key block, but you can change it to other blocks if you want. Same with any of the other axes. And it'll actually mirror it here. So if I place a framework, it'll place two. Now the reason we're placing flat frameworks is we want to be able to build things a little bit away from the center mass of our ship. And also we're adding frameworks so that we can later upgrade them into other components of the ship once we need to. 
So frameworks are very light, very low durability, and very low map and very low cost. So frameworks are perfect for kind of like placing a block in your ship that you say, I want to upgrade this later. For now, I just want it to be kind of empty space, but I want to be able to build on it. And frameworks are perfect for that. So I've added two frameworks here. And now I'm going to get to adding some thrusters. But first, I want to explain a bit about how they work. All right, so let's make a small thruster. So our center mass is somewhere about maybe here, right? If we put it in the middle here, it'll provide a little bit of some things, not, not a lot of anything, right? If we move it towards the front and back of our ship, based on this arrow here, but most importantly based on our center of mass, then it's going to start giving us pitch. Pitch is the ability to move up and down in this direction. As you see, we can't do that currently because we don't have any thrusters. So pitch is pretty important. We want to be able to like aim our ship, move it up, move it up and down. So thrusters will provide more pitch based on being at the front and rear of your ship. You can see how that moves up and down. As we, so in the middle, it's providing almost no pitch. And as we move it forwards, it'll provide more and more. And the back here, all the way at the back of the engine, it's providing 0.07. In the middle, it's doing 0.02. Now, your is the ability to move left and right, to move your ship left and right. And that'll be based on location-wise the left and right sides of your ship in, in comparison to your center of mass. So as you can see in the middle here, we're getting almost no yaw. In fact, in the very middle of our center of mass, which is here apparently, we're getting zero yaw out of this thruster. However, if we place it over here, we're getting 0 0.08. Same deal over here. So you want to, you wanna, we're getting 0 0.08 just there. So you want thrusters to be for providing yaw towards the left and right sides of your ship. On their like outer edges as much as possible, they'll provide more power. And that's based on basically like a leverage principle. Now, the other thing about thrusters is their power, their overall power is based on their volume, just like most blocks in the game. However, surface area also plays a role in thrusters because the overall power is then piped to the different sides of the thrusters. You can see that it can pipe to all sides of this. Now, in Avorian, it doesn't matter if thrusters are covered up. The developers have mentioned that they are okay with sacrificing some realism so the players can build kind of whatever ships they want, aesthetically speaking. So you don't have to have your thrusters outside of your armor, for example, you can have them covered. And even the bottom side of the thruster here that's covered is still gonna pro provide thrust in that direction. So the surface area matters. And this is because it pipes the power in that direction. Now this is important because we also have directional thrusters. So this will only provide that thrust power forwards and back, which is basically gonna give us pitch and it's also going to give us brake thrust. It ends up giving a little bit of a little tiny bit of yaw as well in some spots, but um, mostly it's going to only be applying direct, uh, thrust in that direction, which is going to play a bigger role on bigger ships. For now, on a smaller ship, we're going to want to use just these thrusters that apply in all directions because it'll give us a bit of everything that we need. What this means is if you make a high volume block like this, but then make it really skinny, it's mostly going to be providing thrust forwards and backwards instead of to the sides, right? Because it's not very much space for it to do so. So this will provide a lot of brake thrust because it'll fire jets forwards, which will bring us to a stop. And it'll also provide us a lot of pitch as well. It's a little weird, but you'll kind of get used to it, right? The, the simplest thing is you want to make sure that you're kind of thinking about it in terms of where it's going to be pushing on your ship. Think about it like a thruster is pushing on your ship. And what's it going to do if it pushes on a certain side of your ship? If it pushes here, like this, then it's going to provide a lot of yaw. As you can see, 0.4 rads of yaw. If I move my ship like this, it's going to be able to thrust me in those directions very nicely, but not very much up and down. You can see my ship turns very slowly up and down. So for our first ship, though, we're going to keep things nice and simple, and I'm going to place a nice juicy thruster on either side here, matched up with these uh, fr frameworks that we placed earlier. Now these are pretty big thrusters for a ship of this side, but size, but that's okay because it's going to scale it out a bit as we go. It looks like it's not it's not uh, mirror axing very nicely, so I'm going to just move the mirror axis slightly, just to the center of that block there. And there we go, perfect. That actually looks kind of cool. All right, I'm going to place a few more frameworks, the same kind of as we've done here. I'm going to use that match block feature just to try and like lock these into about the same size there. All right, so our ship is pretty maneuverable, but we're not done. We're going to have to scale that maneuverability up as we add more weight to the ship. Currently, it's very light as it's mostly just framework. Looks like my frameworks are a little off there, so I'm going to have to fix that. All right, there we go. Very nice. 
Now, some components that we add to our ship, we're gonna wanna add in smaller increments than massive blocks like this. If we go to add something like an inertial dampener at that size, it's gonna cost 1200 iron. As you can see, it's a very expensive block. So what we're gonna add, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide some of these frameworks down into smaller components so that we can upgrade them more easily. So to do that, I'm just gonna select one. I'm just gonna control C to copy it. And I'm gonna delete it. I'll delete the one on the other side as well. We can do some mirroring as well to make this nice and simple. Then we can control V to bring out the framework again that we copied. And then we're gonna do some quarter frameworks here. A little bit like this. And I'll do four of those. So it's the same total size of block, but it's broken down into four components. And this is gonna make it nice and easy and nice and modular for us to upgrade things. So now, if we wanna place something like an inertial dampener, which was very expensive before that we wouldn't have been able to do, we can now use this upgrade transform tool that we used at the beginning to upgrade this into an inertial dampener. And that's much, much more affordable. So as you can see, we can add that like that. It's done both sides there, which is probably a bit too much for us even at the moment. So we can undo one of those, turn off the mirroring, and then just end up with one of those for now. So what was that inertia dampener that I just added? Well, that's basically a space handbrake. <laughs> this will provide braking. It'll stop your ship from drifting a little bit as well, which is quite handy. However, the drawback of inertia dampeners is they're quite heavy because they're made of iron. They can only be made of iron and they use a lot of power. So you can see if we take this away, I'll control C it to copy it. If we go to add this, it's gonna add 108 megawatts of power, which brings us pretty close to our 500 current generated. We can't generate much more power at the moment until we locate some titanium, which is gonna be our goal once we complete this initial starting ship. All right, so we're just gonna add one small inertia dampener now. If you're a little bit annoyed by the fact that it's not symmetrical, you could add a thinner one on both sides. It would do the same thing basically, since it's just based on volume, nice and simple for inertia dampeners. The other thing I wanna show you guys is gyros. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete two of these frameworks here for now, because gyros are a little weird. So if you select gyro here, let's turn off match block even. Actually, we'll leave match block on, that's fine. Now what you'll notice is by default, this will provide roll. We're actually at our current maximum roll of four grads, so it can't add any more. And you can see that by the blue arrows there that are ro kind of rotating around our ship like that, you can see it's gonna roll our ship in that direction or in both directions basically, but that's the axis it's gonna roll along. So the gyro is currently allowing us when, when it's activated to roll our ship. If we hold R, we can rotate this block. So if we press this red one, it's instead gonna add your so as you can see, it's turning our ship in that direction there. And if we rotate it a few more times here, just until we find the right axes, the green one I believe we need to hit, then it's gonna provide pitch. So we can see now it's gonna provide 1.34 uh, rads of pitch. So what we could do is we could add in some gyros here to help with the maneuverability of our ship. So I deleted the framework because gyros don't play very well with the um, transform tool because they'll take the rotation of the block you transform into. So for now, we're gonna delete the framework and apply it. Let's, let's, chuck, a, let's chuck a gyro in here, eh? It doesn't really matter where gyros are in your ship. It's just based on volume. So these are really nice and easy ways of kind of like upgrading the maneuverability of your ship. So that, that gave us, um, what did we just upgrade? Pitch. So we'll do the other one, your, since those are gonna be the most important. Roll, not so important. So we're not gonna to need to worry about that too much. Our thrusters will handle the roll we need for now. And we'll put a we'll put a your one on the other side. So we've got two gyros there, one providing pitch and one providing your. And then from there, we can just fill in these slots here with some frameworks. All right, so we now have a very basic, but quite functional ship really. It doesn't look like much, but it's very maneuverable. It'll actually go quite fast because it's fairly light. However, it's extremely flimsy. If we get shot by a pirate a couple times, chunks are gonna start getting blown off our ship and we don't actually have that much overall health of our ship since we're mostly made of frameworks and a couple other uh, low kind of health components like uh, thrusters and gyros and things like that, which can all be exploited quite easily. We only have 141 hull health. That'll increase as we add things. But what we're gonna add now is specifically some things to keep us alive. So we have two things we can do that with primarily. That's gonna be, for the moment at least, that's gonna be hull and shields. So we can see here we have hull. Adding a block like this of hull should add a little bit of HP. 
Alternatively, we can also add armor, which will add a lot more HP. You can see 64 HP for that same size there. However, armor will cost a lot more. It also weighs a lot more as well. You can see this little block of armor here weighs 360 tons. And we currently weigh 1.67 kilotons. So that's a huge percentage increase in our overall ship's weight. However, we are going to want to add a bit of armor, especially to any, any direction where we expect to be taking fire. And for us, that's going to be the front. I'm going to add some edge armor to the front of my ship. So I'm going to rotate this around. And let's keep a lip up the top so that we can place guns on it. We're going to want a nice hard point for us to place guns on. I'm going to use another tool here, block middle, down in this drop down, drop down box, which will lock to the middle of this block that our mouse is currently over. So that means if I increase the size of it, in any direction, it'll it'll increase it based on like either side of that middle of that block basically. So we're right in the middle of that block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this out like this. I'm gonna bring it out a little further. Give us a little bit of a lip protecting the sides of our ship a little bit. And I'm gonna add this edge armor. We can also increase kind of like the angle of this side as well using the D key for that one in this case. What we could do is if we wanted to make this armor a little thinner we could turn down the scale step to half, for example, to 0.25 instead. And you'll see if I angle here, I can actually decrease that smaller and smaller. You can turn that right down and make it almost wafer thin. However, it's obviously going to be adding a lot less health to your ship, and the block itself is going to be less durable. Blocks each have their own individual health. So these small blocks that we added, which apparently have been misplaced a little bit, that's okay, I'll fix that later. Uh, these small blocks will have a lot less health than, say, a bigger block of the same type. When it comes to armor, the thing that's going to be taking the most fire, we want it to be a pretty sizable block at the moment so that it's less likely to get destroyed. So in this case, I'm adding a nice big chunky armor plate to the front of our ship. Now what we just want to check is that that's going to be wide enough to place guns on because I'm going to create, I'm going to turn this into a hard point. It looks like it is. Now the reason for that is if a section of your ship gets blown off that your turrets are connected to, then you will lose the turrets. So we want to make a nice hard point out of a piece of armor, and that piece of armor right there is going to do nicely. I expect to be taking most fire from the front, so adding that there is going to protect us from a lot of that fire, since this block of armor will be taking the damage. As, as it takes damage, our overall ship health will go down still, but this block will be the thing that's taking the damage rather than, say, our thrusters, which means our thrusters aren't going to be getting destroyed, which is important. If your thrusters or your engines get destroyed in combat, then you aren't able to escape. You aren't able to maneuver and escape, and that can be a real problem. So that armor is going to be quite important there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off block middle, go back to grid. I'm going to pad out the rest of this ship here with hull instead. Hull will protect us not as well as armor, but it's still going to protect our ship. So we can add a bit of hull there, and that lines up nicely there. I'm going to go a little fancier here by like adding a uh, adding a space, and then I'm going to put some lights in there just so the ship looks dope. <laughs> yeah. For really precise stuff, as you, as you saw, some of the ships you can make in this game are nuts. For really precise stuff, you can turn the grid size right down and the scale step right down. I don't recommend going without a grid, but you can make the grid a lot smaller. And then you can add like little detailing features and stuff like that. So we can add a, add a uh, bit of a, a glow light there or a bit of a hologram and turn that into a light by painting it. So that looks pretty dope. I'm going to control C, control V this hole here. And then I'm just going to turn off match block and control V again. <laughs> and then I'm going to rotate it around. We can turn on the mirror axing to make sure that this will be the same size. And then we'll put some side pieces on as well. Now we could also add hull or armor plating to the rear and underneath of our ship. However, consider the fact that adding uh, these pieces is going to add weight to your ship. And the more weight to our ship, we add, the less maneuverable it's gonna become. As you can see, our yaw and pitch has already gone down a bit. However, it's still quite high. I would recommend aiming for about a yaw of pitch of at least one rad for your starting ship. Though brake thrust is gonna be particularly important. I really think it's best um, when you're first starting out if your brake thrust is equivalent to your actual thrust. So you might need to get some more iron or get some titanium and get some power generation going so you can add more inertia dampeners. For now though, we are getting pretty low on iron, so we're not gonna be able to do that for now. 
So we're gonna have to make do with the 54.8 uh, meters per second of brake thrust we have right now. We could have, uh, of course add more regular thrusters because they would increase our brake thrust as well, depending on the shape and volume of them. You can see that would add brake thrust as well. So what I'm gonna do for now, in order to not reduce my braking thrust any further or maneuverability any further, I'm gonna leave the bottom side unprotected and we're just gonna make sure that we don't expose our belly to the enemies. Now it's quite important that you get your ship looking as dope as possible. So if you select choose color down here, you can actually paint your ship. You'll have a limited selection of colors to begin with, but once you uh, start killing enemies, you'll actually start getting paints as drops. So you can, you'll be able to get more paint as you go. For now we can just go with this. Just keep it nice and basic, a little bit of red and yellow. I think that looks okay. Let's paint the rest of this here. And we can also paint the engine red, yeah. <laughs> it's very simple, but it works. As you scale up the size of your ship, you may get some like these flashing icons here, and you'll notice that you probably will need more crew because our ship has gone up overall in terms of overall size. We need more mechanics to look after it, so we can assign another one there. Having a few spare crewmen early on, or just in general, is quite helpful because then you can assign them to, um, to different jobs as you need to. I decided to add some cute little wings. <laughs> Maybe I'll paint them orange. Yeah, adorbs. I don't have almost any iron left, so <laughs> that's gonna have to be it for now. So I end up with just about the perfect amount. So what I'm gonna recommend we start with is two iron mining turrets. So you can select these down here. We'll turn off mirroring just to keep it simple. We can turn the grid size up a little bit so we can just place these evenly. And we're gonna place these on the armor hard point. So a nice chunky piece of armor that's not too likely to be blown off our ship is an ideal place to put our starting weaponry. So I'll go ahead and put two mining lasers down there and one chain gun. Now what we can do is press the P menu to open up the ship menu and head to this uh, menu over here to get our weaponry. Then we can add these to hotkeys by pressing the relevant hotkeys. So chain gun's gonna be on one and our mining laser's gonna be on two. Now once we exit the build command, we can basically enable or disable those groups as we like by pressing those keys. Now you'll notice though, however, we can't fire right now and that's because we don't have any crew to actually fire them. So we're gonna go dock and pick up a few more crew members. You can actually check, even from a range, you don't need to dock, what crew is available at each location. So we can see this place has professional gunners and if you want to, you could hunt down some professionals in your starting area, which will be a bit more effective at their jobs and cost you a bit less in the long run as well. So I'm gonna grab two professional gunners. For now, that's a bit more workforce than what we actually need. We're using one turret, so we need two gunners for that one turret. And uh, for that, we uh, we get three workforce from, from two professionals, but that's okay, because we'll probably add more cannons pretty soon. And I'm gonna hire some generic crew just to kit, kit out my mining lasers for now. And we need four for that, so we'll just go ahead and assign four. Now you'll notice it's saying we need more sergeants, and there's a sergeant slot here. Once you get to a certain number of crewmen, you'll start needing sergeants and eventually lieutenants and commanders and generals to actually command that workforce. So we're gonna to need to assign someone to a lieutenant, ah, uh, sorry, to a sergeant, which uh, you can also get professionals to do as well. Generally, it's always better to have professionals wherever possible. Now that we have that, you'll notice our weapons fire. We can change those hotkeys to fire the specific ones that we want to. Something that's helpful once you build your ship is you can hold Alt to reposition your camera. Holding it will reset it to the middle point and you can move it up and down or you can hold Alt and left and right if you want to to uh, get the kind of view for your ship that works based on how you design your ship. If you build a really tall ship, you might want to move to the side, for example. And we're gonna just move our ship up a little bit. Have it kind of in the center there and we can we can basically be like that. Added an iron framework to cut down on the engine glare a little bit. <laughs> you can also add glow or hologram over the engines and then paint them to change the colors as well. It can look pretty sweet. Now there's one more thing that you may have noticed that we did I didn't go over and that's cargo bays. Now cargo bays are the same thing. They allow you to hold extra cargo based on the volume. The reason I haven't added it to the ship yet is because you don't actually need cargo bays unless you're trying to specifically get commodities to either trade or to like pirating commodities off traders. Then you won't need cargo bays unless you're going into that. You don't need cargo bays for credits or these materials up here, or even for like ships weapons and ship systems and things like that. Only for the actual commodities you buy and sell from, uh, from, from stations and mines and things like that, or that you pirate from traders. 
So for now we can go without cargo bays. It's also really easy in this game uh, to just add and subtract things from your ship whenever you want. So if you're like, hey, I want to pick up some cargo or do some trading, you can just strap a cargo bay on the bottom and take it away later when you don't need it anymore. So for now we're going to go without cargo bays on this basic starter ship because it's not too important right now. And one last thing we're going to need on the glorious Vegemite, and that is insurance. We would be heartbroken if we lost it. Also, we'd be actually, actually broke because we spent a lot of our credits <laughs> and uh, resources on it. So we're going to go ahead and hold shift and go up to the insurance plan here. You can see how much it's going to cost to get full insurance and how much your ship value is. And that's what will be returned if your ship is destroyed. And your ship, first ship is probably going to be destroyed, right? You're going to crash into an asteroid or get blown up by pirates. It's going to happen. So it's a good idea to get insurance because it allows you to much more easily jump into building your second ship or rebuilding the ship. So we're going to go ahead and get insurance. Now, if you have enough credits, you can buy full insurance. That will actually leave us with a fair bit of credits left over. If you have spent a bit more on your ship and you don't have enough credits, then you can set up automatic payments. For now, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and buy full, full insurance, get ourselves fully insured. You may want to, as you start upgrading it though, the value of your ship will go up. You may want to buy insurance to match the difference or set up automatic payments to automatically cover that. We can set up automatic payments and automatically cover any upgrades we add to our ship. So that is it for this first episode. You, we now have a functional ship that can go and do things. It can mine or it can shoot things. It's uh, it's it's ready to go. In the next episode, I think I'll probably go over locating and mining titanium and upgrading your ship with some important components, including things like energy generation. And then we can move from there. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode and found it informative. Enjoy your Avorian action. That is it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thank you very much for watching. That was a little close. <laughs>